and welcome to Maker.io. In the previous two episodes, we learned how to use Adafruit.io to send and receive data as well as use triggers. But in this episode, we're going to learn how to use the ESP8266 to use with Adafruit. So the first task in hand is to configure the Arduino IDE to use the ESP8266 board. So to do that, we go to Tools, Board, and then we need to select the Adafruit Feather Hazard ESP8266. Now, if you don't have that board listed, then you need to get the board. And to do that, you can go to Board, Board Manager, and then in the search bar, just look for Hazard, and then go ahead and install that package. Then you'll need to plug in your Hazard board into the computer. You'll also need to configure the port that you'll be using. In this case, mine is 19 and you can change the board rate if you want to upload the program faster. For me, I personally try to see if I can get this, the 921,600 board rate because that's pretty fast. Before we upload this program to the ESP8266, we need to change a few settings. The first one is we need to get the key. So we can go into Adafruit IO and then view AIO key and copy that in with quotations around it. We also need to create a feed that we're going to use. So under my feed, I've created a new feed called ESP8266, and I create the feed object. In the setup code, all we need to do is use the command io.connect, and this loop here, which continuously executes until the board connects to adafruit.io. Bearing in mind, you will also need to make sure you put your Wi-Fi SSID and your Wi-Fi password, as well as your IO username. Then, when the ESP8266 has connected to Adafruit.io, it will then run this loop indefinitely. In this example, we're only going to save data to a feed, and to do that, we use the little arrow symbol here, which is a hyphen and a greater than symbol, and then we use the command save, and then whatever we're saving to the feed, in this case, the number 10. At the end of the loop is a delay function, and this is very important. Adafruit.io has limitations on how much data you can send per second or per minute. So I've put a five second delay so I don't go over this limit. Once all of this is done, we simply click upload. And then once the program is uploaded, we should see it run. And now data comes through. Well, that's all we have time for today in this episode. Thank you for watching and see you next time.